super hot. What's going on? This is an episode of The Pick is In with Nate Talk Sports, Classified 3F with Joel and Big Pat Sports Talk. This is going to be our weekly series until the draft comes. I'm excited about this. Today's episode, man, we're going to be talking about top edge rushes in the 2022 NFL draft. Man, we got a lot of them to talk about from Aiden Hutchinson to Thibodeau all the way down. To a guy that people probably don't know, but I've been doing film on, that's Cameron Thomas. So th- th- just to give you a little insight of what I think, what I want in the edge rusher, is everybody know I'm a Giants fan. Everybody on here is a Giants fan. So what I want in the edge rusher for my team is an edge rusher that has good pass rushing, but he's also very good against the, the run that can actually hold the edge. And what I mean by hold the edge is you don't let people get to the outside of you and you play the run very well. There's a few in uh, in this draft that I truly believe can do that, and we'll get into the tiers later, man. And Nate, man, I just want to want you to tell me what you think that uh, we need in the edge rusher this year. What do you think about this edge rusher class coming out this year? Well, I think it's a fantastic class. Certainly a lot better than last year. I mean, there's guys top to bottom, like you mentioned before. There's the Aiden Hutchinsons and the Kayvon Thibodeaux of the world, all the way down to guys in the third, fourth round that can still be a big impact player on this defense. So with what I'm looking for, I'm really just looking for a guy that dependably, play after play, will be getting after the quarterback. I think that's what this defense has been missing for a long time. That's what's been the identity of the best Giants defenses we've seen. That's been pass rush. And I'm looking for a guy that, as much as Aziz Ojolari had a nice rookie season, I'm looking for someone that can win with speed, win with power, win with finesse, a guy that knows how to attack the quarterback. He's coming with bad intentions. That's a guy that's going to come off the edge and say, all right, AZ, we're meeting up at the quarterback in the backfield. That's the play, every play. So that's what I'm looking for. Uh, Joel, what are you looking for? I mean, I, I, I just like that basic three down edge. Somebody that you don't have to worry about getting them in there on first down, second down, pulling him for some, a, spe- a specialist coming into the third. Uh, you know, We get in trouble, it seems like, whenever we try to sub players in and out or try to get different packages in. That just confuses a lot of people. I'm like a kiss theory person. Keep it simple, stupid. And and there's going to be guys that are deeper in this draft that can develop into that three down edge or outside linebacker, you know, however they're listed. Uh, That's going to take a little bit of time. We do have time right now as Giants fans. So don't look for an edge in the first round, maybe not even in the second round. They might look at a value piece in the third because we do have some guys on this team right now that can do – they, they can get to the quarterback. Uh, the interior line is going to might be a big need. And, and the Giants are famous for getting defensive linemen in the second round. So we're going to have to wait and see what the staff's like, Pat. Exactly. Now, we mentioned about, you just mentioned about the Giants. They may go in the second or third round to get an edge rusher this year. But as we all know, we have a whole new regime here. And mm-hmm. with the Giants, we're going to have a whole new head coach and a whole new GM, maybe a whole new scouting team and maybe a whole new training staff. Who knows? There's a lot of pieces that are going to be moving. What if we change to the 4-3? Mm. Do you think edge rusher, as far as like a defensive end, is more prominent now that we change to a 4-3? Or what do you guys see in the future as far as our pass rush goes? I'm going to let Nate go, then I'm going to sure. let Joe go, then I'm going to go in after you guys. What do you think this pass rush is going to be? in the future now that we have a whole new regime here in New York? Well, it's going to depend entirely on what our new head coach slash defensive coordinator sees and what what he sees is best for us. I think that's going to depend a lot on what the general manager thinks because it has been said by Mara that he wants a general manager who's going to be the boss. He wants someone that has a vision for the team overall, and I'm sure part of that vision is going to be the, the, the front seven. 
those four down defensive linemen or three down defensive linemen, depending on what decision he makes. For me personally, I've said for a while that I would I would like to move to a, a four man front just on a more down-to-down basis. Obviously, in the NFL, no one is sticking in one personnel grouping of the entire game where you get ripped apart. you got to be able to be multiple. you got to be able to switch. But out of a base package, I would very much like to see us move to a four just because of what we have right now. If we didn't make any moves, which it's entirely likely, likely we might, with what we have right now, I would very much like to shift Leonard Williams back inside to a defensive tackle role alongside Dexter Lawrence, keep Aziz Ojolari in the five tech as a defensive end, and then draft our pass rusher alongside him on the opposite side. That's how I see it playing out, because if we can get another complimentary edge rusher with Aziz, Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams is one of the best two defensive tackle duos in the league, as far as I'm concerned. And then you can let those guys on the edge get one-on-ones. So that's how I would tend to see this future. Joel, what are your thoughts there? Well, you know, I, I I love what you guys are saying, and yes, we definitely. Oh, uh, there's internet. Uh, a little bit of internet problems. Yeah. Oh, it's affected me big time. You know, which is easier to to confuse an offense on a blitz package? Is that a three man front, a four man front, or a five man front? Well, I think when you're looking at defenses, and Pat, you, you can definitely chime in on this because you're a big X and O's guy, I know. When you're looking at, at blitz packages and looking at moving guys around, a lot of the best teams that do it in the league are three-man fronts. You're, you're looking at the Patriots, you're looking at the Rams, guys that yeah. tend to do a lot with stunts and games up front with their defensive linemen and linebackers, and those are teams that like to have yes. guys that can do it all. So, Yes. Yes, that, yeah. so, that, so that's where I'm going to stand, Pat. I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but – it just seems to me that, you know, you can run a complicated looking defense in the simplistic uh, uh, manners for these these newer guys coming in by like running a three man front. And then you got four linebackers. You bring the linebackers up on the line. If you've got those guys that can set the edge and be a three down edge, they can get out there on the screens because that's how you beat that defense is you start throwing the ball wide receiver screens, running backs mm-hmm. in the flat. You know, the little tiny stop routes, the five-yard comebacks, that's that's what you're doing. If you've got athletic guys on the edge that can cover that, you got to push up the middle. That allows your linebackers to just come back or stunt or blitz or twist and just keep keep look different looks every play. I'll say this with the uh, New York Giants. I think if you don't want this defense to take a major step back, because if we switch to the four three, Nate, I don't think we have the personnel to run. Yeah, a right now, maybe I not. I don't think we have the linebackers to run a four three. I don't think we have the defensive ends to run a four three. At the moment, the no. defensive tackles, I think we'll be okay. But I like Old Jalari as an edge rusher in a three four more than a four three. I'm just gonna be honest with you. That's fair. The reason why it gives him a little bit of room to operate before the offensive lineman can get his hands on. And he's a smaller stature compared to a regular defensive end in the four three. So it, it it just depends. They both can be successful, no doubt. Because sure. good coaches make pieces work. Yep. And blitzing, it doesn't matter if you're in a three, four or a four three. I mean, blitzing is depends on the, the personnel that you have in there and who knows how to get past those guards when you blitz. All right. Or if you blitz a, a cornerback, who knows how to get who, who knows how to get in the backfield? Peppers was very good at that. I'll give Peppers that he was very good at that. So as far as changing to a four three, I, I'm with it either way because major change need to happen. If you switch it to a four three, you feel more comfortable in a four three. By all means, go do it. But you bring the players in here that can run a four three. Yeah, sure, sure. And I think that's definitely part of what's going to happen now is as we switch into yet another general manager, he's going to sort of see what he likes, those cornerstone pieces, and he's going to decide how to fit the defense around them. And I think one thing where we're talking about here with this edge class is one of the best things as far as I can tell being the variety. Because if you want any sort of edge defender in this class, you have an opportunity to draft him. And if you want a guy that can do it all, you can go get him. And he's not going to be a high price tag. There's one guy that I'm sure we'll talk about later on that I, I bet you know who I'm talking about, Pat, out of Notre Dame, who's just a Swiss army knife of a front seven guy. And I think if you have a defensive coordinator who knows how to use him and knows how to use that Swiss army knife, he could be a really potent weapon up front. 
But with that said, uh, anyone have any last thoughts before we transition to these specific players we're talking about here? Uh, no, I don't have any more thoughts. It's just that, hey, just run the personnel with what you have. If you have to run a 3-4 the first year, then transition to a 4-3, that's great. But if you know that you got the personnel to run a 4-3, go ahead and run a 4-3 as far as the Giants go. Joe, you got any more thoughts on that? No, not really. I mean, I think we covered that really well as to, you know, what we're going to be looking at when it comes to, you know, who we think is going to be in our top five edge rusher class, who might be in the second round, who might be a third round. I mean, that's going to all dictate a lot of it is scheme fit and, and you know, the talent that's there. That's yeah, for sure. Okay. So let's get to the nitty gritty. Now, this, this is the part of the show where we're going to talk about tiers of the defensive edge rushes coming into this draft. We're, just, we're not going to do the normal thing like a top 10. We're going to do something a little different here on the pick is in. We're going to give you tiers of who we think is going to first, who we think is going to second, third, fourth, and so on. So I can pretty much guarantee, do, do we all agree on this panel that the number one edge rusher in this class is Aiden Hutchinson? I think I've convinced you of it thoroughly, have I not? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 after watching this kid, yeah, Pat. Yeah, so we can all agree that the consensus number one edge rusher in this class. Sorry, Joe, I'm blocking your face a little bit. <laughs> You're I mean, fine. I, I don't one. think Joel could ever be offended by being blocked out by that handsome man right there. Right. Hell no, man. Hell no. So I believe that the, if he failed to the New York Giants with our top pick, I think we pounce on him. I'm just going to be honest with you. So we're all in agreement on Aiden Hutchinson. Definitely first rounder can be the sure. number one pick overall. Yeah, now, gotta here's be top where dog. We may disagree. I'm gonna ask you, Nate, first. Who do you believe is right behind Aiden Hutchinson in the in the edge rusher ranks? Well, I sense you're gonna try and throw me a curveball here, but I I would say that even though there is a distinct gap, I would still say Kayvon Thibodeau belongs in that same tier one. I think they're the only two that are in that tier one, but I do think they're there. I think they could definitely be pick number one and two in this draft with the Lions and Jags. The Jags don't need an edge rusher, but who doesn't need Aiden Hutchinson, you know? So I think the Lions are definitely in the market for a ferocious pass rusher like Kayvon Thibodeau, or if they end up with Aiden Hutchinson in their laps, I think they could go that direction too. So I think it's it's going to be those two, neck and neck. Obviously, Thibodeau didn't quite have the year he was hoping to, but sometimes that happens. Thibodeau is still an absolute freak of nature. Uh, he is just so athletically talented and gifted. And there's some rough edges to be sanded off for sure. But then again, a lot of guys coming out of the draft are like that. Miles Garrett was like that when he came out. If, if these guys have that dog in them and they have that athletic talent, that gift from God, that's a guy that can definitely get after it. So he's going to be up in there in that tier one with him. Okay, so you only have Hutchinson and Thibodeau in your tier one, correct? That's it. Joe, give me your tier one or edge rushes, and I'll go after you guys. Okay, uh, this is where me and Nate might not see eye to eye. I, I did, some, <laughs> I did some, some reviews today, and I'll tell you what. George mm-hmm. Karloff's just impressed me big time. Yeah. This man, his highlight tape, he was not only stopping the run, he was not only setting the edge, he was, you know, not only getting after the passer, but when people tried to run an RPO on him, he just plays it perfectly. He has a little bit more than Thibodeau when it comes to setting the edge, playing the run, because for me, that's Thibodeau's weakness. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't like to set that edge and play the run. Look, as a pa- if you want a pure pass rusher, it's hard to say Thibodeau is not that guy. If he, if that's all he's doing, but that's why we went into the beginning of this stream saying what we're looking for a three down edge, mm-hmm. and that's why I'm going to have Karlofsis right now as my number two because it's just multi purpose. He does things all. Ah, uh, that internet. Mm-hmm. More. I hate this. I hate it all the time. All right, well. Yeah, he sets, I mean, Sorry, sorry, go ahead. He sets back? the edge, and, and then I'm going to have number three. Yeah, I'm back. Then number three, I'm going to have a Jabo. Really? Number th- Oh, yes. Yeah, so oh, this kid's going to move up draft boards. Oh, n- nothing against Ojabo. He's an absolute beast. I'm just surprised you got Thibodeau down at four. 
Yeah, I do only because of his defense against the run and, and setting the edge. Okay, and that's the only thing I'm holding against Thibodeau. Like I said, if you want a pure pass rusher, a, a third down guy to come in and break up, you know, he's the guy. There's no question yeah. about that. That kid has pass rush moves, multi talented. Mm-hmm. But if you're looking for a three down guy, I've got to put him fourth. If I'm just wanting a pass rusher, he's definitely number one. Fair. And I, I will say, Joel's talking about what we were discussing at the beginning of the stream with what we're looking for in an edge. And right on brand, Joel's looking for a guy to be that do everything guy set against the run. And I said I wanted someone that was going to get after the quarterback every play. Right. I mean, you can say what you want. We're consistent. And right. I will, I will <laughs> absolutely agree with you. Uh, Thibodeau, definitely his weakness is the run game. He's, I think he's shown he can set yes. against the run. He's shown he can. He just hasn't done it consistently enough. And that is why he's fallen. I mean, before the season started, everybody, everybody was saying Kayvon Thibodeau is going to go number one. He was, yep. he was the consensus. He was the guy. So I think that is what people were looking for in this last season. And he just didn't show it consistently enough. Now, if we're talking about David Ojabo, one thing you got to say about that Michigan defense, they attack the run. That yes. is a defense that they had a tough time against Georgia because Georgia's just – a monstrous team they had a tough time against georgia but other than that game that defense attacks the run those edge rushers they do not hold back defensive coordinator lets them off the leash and they get after it they got them long arms they've got a great mm-hmm. bend around the edge and yeah. that's what i liked about Karlovs is he's got them long arms he can reach in there against these long armed uh, the offensive tackles, the right left tackle, the guard. He can yeah. he's quick enough where they can't catch him. If he can get a half a step, Carlos yeah. is gonna beat that guard. And, and you know, is, can get there. Sorry. Yeah, and, and Carl Loftus is a guy that one thing you gotta know about that dude, if there's anything you're gonna know about George Carl Loftus, that dude has power. He yeah, will he get in your face and drive. This is a dude, that I think the big thing for me when I'm looking at him, it's not just his length, it's not just his, his run setting ability. I'm looking at George Karloftis, and I'm looking at a guy that I can, you're talking about versatility, you can set him in a pass rush against a tackle or a guard. He can yes. still win. Yes. He can win in a three tech, he can win in a five tech, and he can do both with pure power. This is a guy that just, he is the definition of a Big Ten defensive lineman. He gets after it. He puts his nose to the grindstone, and this kid will grind you into dust. But with that said, uh, Big Pat, what, what are your what are your thoughts on this one here? Um, you guys said a lot, man, but I, I'm gonna tell you my tier one. And shout out to George Karloftis because uh, I I'll, I'll eat some crow. That guy is pretty damn good. The more I look at his film. Tomorrow, I'm like, okay, I'm going to need some pro for this guy. He, he probably should go in that top five. But um, my tier one is going to be, obviously, Aiden Hutchinson, number one. I got to put Ojabo before Thibodeau. But those okay. will be my, my top three. That's my tier one. Now, to jump off to tier two, it's going to be Carl Loftus. Now, my tier two is going to be Carl Loftus. This guy here, Jermaine mm, Johnson. Jermaine Johnson. And JJ yep. and Nick Bray. Nick Bray those, right that's now. my tier two right there. Uh, the reason why I say those are my tier two, Carl Loftus, he's probably going to be in my tier one before it's all said and done. I'm just going to be honest with you. He might even jump Thibodeau for me. I might even have to put Thibodeau at four because. Oh, so Thibodeau's Thibodeau was front. there. I was, I was going to say, where's Kayvon Thibodeau? <laughs> yeah. T- Thibodeau. His his run his his play against the run worries me. That's fair. What That's I mean fair. by that is he has an injury history already. I'm tired of people being on the Giants with injury histories. I'm, I'm literally I'm just gonna be honest. I mean, Aiden Hutchinson that, has an against, injury history. I mean, yeah, but it was one. Thibodeau continues to get hurt and has kept him out most of the season. That's fair. That's fair. But what I'm more worried about, we're going to be playing against quarterbacks in our division that run the RPO pretty damn well. Yeah. Dak Prescott runs it well. Jalen Hurts runs it well. And if Washington, let's say they select Malik Willis or someone like that, he's going to run it pretty well. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. This is what I talk about to the fans as as being, you got to think like a GM. 
So if I'm thinking like a GM and a head coach, and I know my whole division is pretty much RPO, and Dallas has a top running game, Washington has a top running game, Philly has the best running game in the league. I don't think Thibodeau fits us as well as a, a Hutchison or Karloftis or even Noel Jabo. That's fair. And so that's why I would have him fourth, just because I'm a Giants fan. Now, if you just want to go fan period, you like edge rusher, he's probably number one because mm-hmm. he is a beast when it comes to rushing that passer. But I could get almost the same amount of pass rush from Hutchison and get way better run run protection or run defense from those guys. So that's yeah. why I, that's why I think I'll probably knock him to my tier two and put Karloftis in my tier one coming but for right now Karloff this is tier two top of tier two then I so, got then I got Jermaine Johnson and uh Enique Ray coming in right after those guys reason why I like those guys Johnson he's a pure edge rusher he has to work on his run game a little bit and the reason why he's tier two is because I think he comes off the line a little bit slow me and Joe yeah. been watching film on him I think he does come off the line a little bit slow but he is a beast. So if you teach him how to come off that line a little faster, I think he could be an absolute monster. And Nick Bray is just a grown man. Yeah. 6'5, 260. We can move him inside or outside. And when that kid's focused, I could I think he's one of the top edge rushers as far as getting to the quarterback in this draft class. When you look he at He gets it, after it. He gets after it, gets the run and the pass. So that's my tier two. Uh Karloftis. Jermaine Johnson and Nate Bray. What do you think about what what do you think about that, Nate? Yeah, I think I'm I'm gonna end up having a little distinction with yours, not in in the sense of the rankings so much. Uh the only the only difference in rankings is probably gonna be where we have Thibodeau, just because our priorities are a little a little different. But in terms of individual players, we're probably looking at the same thing. I'm gonna split the tier off a little bit. I think there's a gap, a significant gap between an Ojabo and a Karloftis or like a Jermaine Johnson and and um, like, or you're talking about an Ibarra, you might be talking about Eddie Cady, someone else like that. I think there's a significant gap there. So I would say if you want to define it, maybe a tier one, tier one B, and then tier two, I would say that I'm probably looking at a guy like Eddie Barre in the second round. That's probably where I'm looking at him. I think when I'm looking at Jermaine Johnson and I'm looking at Enigbare, you're looking at guys that have all the tools but just aren't quite there yet, need a little bit of work, need some polishing, need a little bit of coaching up. Uh, so I think those are guys that I don't I don't quite want to take in the first round, especially compared to a lot of the guys we just talked about. You're talking about an Ojabo, a Karloftis. Those are there's underrated, and then there's guys like that who are only t- who are only not edge one and edge two because of the guys in front of them. So I think when you're talking about Jermaine Johnson, you're talking about a guy of his caliber. It's a really solid player. It's a guy with, like you're talking about, a lot of tools. His spin move is nasty. So I think you're looking at Jermaine Johnson. That's a guy that, like you said, great pass rusher, needs a little bit of work on his get-off. I'm a little nervous with get-off. That's one thing that I really prefer to see in college tape instead of hoping a coach can, can instill into a guy. But it's still a guy with enough upside to be a high yeah. second-round pick for me. And then one other guy that I have really just been struggling with in terms of where I want to place him is one of my favorite prospects, a guy that I'm not totally sure where I want to slot him, a guy by the name of Isaiah Foskey out of Notre Dame. And I'm just not sure if I want to put him in high second round. He's going to be somewhere in the second for me by the time I'm done evaluating. Hold on, let me finish. And I say this. My instinct says late second round, early third. That's where, that's where my gut says. But th- there's a part of my brain that says a defensive coordinator who's looking for a guy to move around the formation, a guy that can rush the passer, can cover, can manage his own, can key against the run game, that's really valuable to a defensive coordinator that wants to yes. move someone around like that. So yes. I think if you're, if you're looking at the Giants, it's tough because we don't know who our defensive coordinator is going to be yet. So I'm looking at it from, from a value standpoint. He's not as talented or, or necessarily as, as much of a dominant edge rusher as the guys we're listing right now. Certainly not. He's definitely not in that pass rushing stratosphere. But from in terms of an edge defender, 
a guy that in a value standpoint, you can make sort of the Patriots, when they were using Kyle Van Noy to the best of his abilities, and they were making him sort of that everything guy, that's sort of what I'm looking at him as. And I think if, if a team really likes his skill set, they could be looking at him maybe mid-second round. I would probably place him, and again, this is why I struggle, I would probably place him late second, high third. So I'm not sure where I want to put him in tiers, but I did want to mention him briefly. So that's probably what my tier two is looking like. What are you thinking, Joel? I, I like where you guys are going with this because, I mean, there's a difference between, you know, uh, 40 time in the combine and then you got game tape, game speed, yeah. game production. Yeah. I did some research, you know, I did some some stuff today, and I watched Drake Jackson from USC because I heard his name popping up a little bit, okay? And, look, I, 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 I'm going to agree with you on that, okay? The guy is slow. Yeah. Another guy Very. that I was looking at was Maji <laughs> Sanders because everyone's talking about him, and he's mm -hmm. slow. Mm -hmm. Look, I put Jermaine Johnson over both of those guys, even though right now they're all rated above Jermaine Johnson. But Jermaine Johnson has game speed. He does. He, he does. He's a little bit, bit faster with the first up. You know, just a little bit better all around. He's not For me, Jermaine Johnson is not going to need as much work as he is other guys. So I'm putting Jermaine Johnson in that you know 22 to 30 range in the first round because he's going to be enough talent. He's going to put up numbers at the combine, and he's going to jump a lot of these guys by showing that quickness and that burst in the three-cone drill, in the 40-yard, the 10-yard the, the time, the 20-yard time. He's going to show that he has that quickness. He's got a pretty good spin move. He's got a oh, really yeah. good first step. He can definitely take on. He's big enough. You know, he's 6'4", 262. He can go in and battle with those guards in that center and get them out of the way. So, mm -hmm. you know, they, a lot of this a lot of this stuff right now, even though Drake Johnson is, like, ranked sixth, and, and they've got Isaiah Folksy, your guy from Notre Dame, he's – He's like ninth, so and then Nick Medito, another guy from Oklahoma. Again, I, for me, he's a little slow. Yeah, you know these guys are going to have to work on that first step a lot. And like Nate was saying, I want to see that first step explosive in college, not in the absolutely, pros. right, Pat? Yeah, exactly and and just not. to to piggyback on that real quick, I think when when you're looking at these these guys, a mistake a lot of people make is they watch highlights, not tape. And when you're looking at right. highlights, there's things that, especially with the edge rushing position, there's things that you have to be able to take into account and look beyond one good play. Because a lot of, I, I remember when I first started to dig into this draft class, and Drake Jackson was one of the higher rated names, and yes. I, I flipped on some USC tape, and I'm watching this kid. And <laughs> the first thing I always do, so what, this is just how I scout, it's, it's, whatever, everyone has their own method. What I like to do is I like to watch highlights before I turn on actual tape so I can get a sense of what is the ceiling? What should I be excited about? What should I be looking for? And then when I turn on the tape, how often am I seeing it? How much am I seeing that explosive first step? How much have I, am I seeing that finesse? How much am I seeing these guys dominating offensive linemen? And with Drake Jackson, when you turn on his highlights, a lot of it is just really poor tackle play. Right. A lot of this guy getting to the quarterback is tackles that are either A, tripping over their own feet, B, terrible technically, or C, even slower than he is. And then when you turn right. on his tape, <laughs> Drake Jackson is a guy that just doesn't get after it. He doesn't have that dog in him, right. he, in, especially in the run game. My God, sometimes it looks like he's running away from the play. So this is a guy that yeah. I just it's, – it's too much hype. He's a project for sure. Like I, I don't, I don't think he's anywhere near the top ten edge rushers. He's not sniffing it. But anyway, I'm, I'm interrupting. Actually, Pat, please go on. I'm actually have him below Isaiah Frosty from Notre Dame. I'm oh yeah, be well with you. I can see I have that. Him, well I have well. him as a fourth to fifth round pick in my eyes. It might be a little ass hoers, but I'm telling you, man, I don't, I don't, I don't like that kid. I don't, I don't, not personally, but I just don't yeah, like right. him as a player. Agree. Uh, but yeah, I definitely would have him like tier four. My tier, I mean, if you want to start working on tier three, it's this guy right here from Georgia. Mm. Who? 
I like this guy, Trayvon Nolan. Walker. Oh, okay, okay. Trayvon Walker is very good. Nolan Smith is right there with him. I think they're two in the same. Yeah, I think, I think they're they pretty similar. I, I, I think they play very similar. And I'm going to show you a guy that a lot of people aren't looking at either. Arnold Abikay. Yeah, yeah Abikay. I was, yeah. was going to mention him. Yeah. He's, he's – I don't want to say boom or bust. I'm going to if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't say it, I will. But if you teach this guy – how to play the edge position, I think he could be a monster. Absolutely. But he has to be willing to put it in the work because if he doesn't put it in the work and he goes in there and think he's just going to do it all straight talent like he did in college, he's going to get eight a lot. Yeah. He has yeah. to put on a little bit more weight and he has to get a lot more pass rush moves. Yeah. He's a project as well, but I like him as a project over Drake Jackson. I really Absolutely. Do. Yeah, and – I'll I'll just like just start off by talking about Arnold Abikati because he is he is the poster child of this third tier for me. He is mm -hmm. the name of this third tier that defines all of the rest of the guys. Because this is a guy you're looking at Penn State's recent players that have come into the draft. They're all pretty similar. These are athletic freaks that really don't have a ton of experience at the defensive position they're playing. Right, they don't really right. know the ins and outs of it yet, but the potential is clear as day. Arnold Abikati is a freak of nature. He is one of the best athletes in this edge class, and you can see it. When he's beating guys in college, it's probably because he's just a superior athlete. Whether it's with power, whether it's with pure speed, whether it's a cutback inside, he's just too much sometimes. The problem is, A, like Pat said, no bag. No bag whatsoever. And if you're going to be an elite edge rusher, you've got to have a bag of tools. At the moment, he just doesn't. Those are things that need to be coached up with him. And B, wildly inconsistent. Wildly inconsistent. The problem for me is that if he is winning, it's because his first step is magnificent. He's basically moving before the tackle is. It's spectacular to watch. And then there's other plays. He'll, he'll crush the quarterback for a sack, come back on the next play, and he won't be moving by the time the, cackles, the, the tackle's in his kick set. And the guy's right. just stuck in cement. He's out of the play. He's already eliminated, and it's a waste of a rep. So I'm looking at this guy, and if you won't say it, I will. He is boom or bust. Either, like you said, he's going to put in the work, and he's going he's gonna to be coachable, and he's going to be able to pick up some of that stuff that he doesn't have right now on the technical side of things, or it just ain't going to work out. For me, once you reach that tier, and I'm looking at him as a third rounder, I'm looking at him probably mid-third round, or eh, maybe high to mid third round. I'm looking at Arnold Ebicady, and that's where I feel comfortable taking a guy like that. A guy with huge potential that if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but it's worth the shot. So, uh, Joel, what are your thoughts, sir? I'm going to go with a guy out of San Diego State, Cameron Thomas, Ooh, yeah. for yeah. a guy Thomas, like that. Good name, I good thought name. I was going to bring it up. There you yeah. go. Good good name. This guy, <laughs> look, this guy's. Six five two sixty five. Look, mm -hmm. this guy. This guy could be that gem third rounder. Oh yeah. I mean, now this guy has got some talent. He's got a little bit. He's, he's going to have to develop it. Yeah, he really mm -hmm. is. But that's one of the guys. And look, I I know he's a little undersized, but Derek Hall from Auburn. He's only yeah. six two. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you know the, he's two sixty, man. If he if he could put on fifteen pounds, he might be that good. Uh, you know, just come in. Maybe he can play like the, the the inside next to an edge. Maybe take on a double team for like a third round. He might be that guy that yeah. you could you could throw there on a five man front. Uh, sometimes some smaller guys are harder for the bigger guys to block. So if it's he a can produce. Thing, yeah. Exactly. If he can produce a little bit of power, a little bit more power, strengthen his legs and get a good bull rush where he can push the guards and stuff back, you know, and, and then make big people acquire him for a, he could be a productive player. You're not going to hear about him a lot, but what his play could do could definitely help the other guys on, on the line. So those are yeah. my two. And just before I move on from that, before I move on from Cameron Thomas, I, it's like I was saying before, he is in that same exact vein as Epic 80 where he is very raw and like it looks right. a lot like it's there, but is it? 
it's there, but is it always? When is it there? When is it not? Right. And he had a tough time against some really strong competition. So it's just, oh, you want it, but it's not quite worth the high pick. It's a guy that you wash, for sure. I agree 100%. I'll tell you this about Cam Thomas as well. If you play a 3-4, I think you pick him into the inside. I think that's where you Absolutely. Play yes. Absolutely. I don't, yes. I don't see him as a true edge rusher. But no. if you put that guy, kick him inside – you have a, a, a defensive tackle like a Leonard Williams that can rush that pass or two, I think that dude can do some damage on a team like that. The Ravens yeah, I, I think Cam Thomas is a defensive needed. lineman through and through. Yeah, I think he's a traditional defensive lineman. Yes. If you kick him out on a 4-3, I think he would be pretty good in the 4-3 too, kicking him out at the defensive end. But he's not an edge rusher. No. Nah. But if, he's a defensive if, end true and true to me. Agreed. If Cameron Thomas could develop a little bit more speed, you know, you put him on a five-man mm-hmm. front with Roche, Ojolari, Carter's probably not going to be back, but Leonard Williams and Dexter, you know, you got a pretty impressive five-man front. Who's coming? Yeah. Because a lot of three of those guys are going to command a double team. So before we move on to the next tier, I, w- I wanted to ask your opinion on a guy because I am I am sort of split on my feelings here. And I want, I want to talk about him while we're on this topic. Cause he is also, I'd say pretty definitively a defensive lineman. I want to talk about Sam Williams real quick. Perfect. Cause I, I think he's in that next tier, but I'm not sure. I think I look at him and I look at cam Thomas and I have a tough time saying that cam Thomas is so far ahead of him. I think maybe he has a little more, a little more spark almost if you want to define it as that. But I think Sam Williams gets a shout because Sam Williams is also a defensive lineman definitively, and he's, he's going to do the dirty work, and every once in a while he's going to get to the quarterback. And that's a guy that I think is definitely worth a pick depending on what we do with our defensive front this offseason and depending on who we bring in with our, our defensive coordinator role. That's a guy that you might look at as a sneaky, sneaky late third, early fourth pick if we, if we move around the draft board. Definitely. Definitely, uh, I can I can have him and uh, Cam Thomas in the same tier. Like they're yeah. almost the same type player to me. To be That's honest, that's what I say. Yeah. Right. The only thing I have, I, look, it, it's only a couple of inches. He's only six three, but yeah. he's still two sixty five. He's got the size and the weight, but a lot of his measurables are going to be his arms. Unfortunately, we all know yeah. how the length of the arms because of these long arm tackles. How does he use his leverage if he is short armed? You know, is yeah. there development there that that's going to be these some of these guys that are six two six three? Unfortunately, it's they're only going to be drafted on analytics, yeah. and I hate that. But and it's 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 an uphill battle for edge rushers. Obviously, they don't have that length because if you don't have length off the edge, you got to have technique. You got to know how right. to use your hands. Extreme you get you got to know how to how to protect your yes. chest. And that's what a yes. guy like Nick Bosa does, because he doesn't have elite length, but his hand uses his hand usage rather is so good that he can he can make up for it. So when you're looking at a guy like Cam Thomas, you're looking at a guy like Sam Williams, you're probably looking at a guy that isn't necessarily going to ever be a premier pass rusher, but a guy that can be a role player, a guy that can be there on the field, can be tough against the run, and then every once in a while when he's got a one-on-one with a guard and when he's got a one-on-one with an offensive tackle that's in a situation where he's not expecting it, this can be a guy to make a play for you. Like a Chris Canty. Yep. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Chris for for Giants fans, play. right, for Giants fans trying to figure out what how we're doing this, it would be like Chris Canty. He only had 22 and a half sacks, but there were times when he was a disruptor. He would make that yeah. one play, and sometimes that's all you need is one guy to go out and make one play. Absolutely. Exactly. Um, we're going to get to probably the last tier of our guys, and then we're going to decide who we want to run some film on. And then we're going to wrap up the first show, man. I'm, I'm excited, man. I like this show, man, already. This first episode has been great. Yes, but sir. let's get to the last. We're going to call this the last tier. We're going to go the last tier players. I'm going to go with this guy here, Nick Benito. Yeah. reason why I have him that low is because I don't think – he has a place. He's absolutely I think he's a little great. bit too small to be an edge rusher outside in the NFL. He's a little bit too small to be a middle linebacker in the NFL to me. He doesn't have great get off. Because you know they, they said the same things about Von Miller, but Von Miller put on a little weight when he got to the league and 
he dominated. He had banned out of this world. Yeah. I think Nick Benito, his best role in the league is probably like a Jabril Peppers, to be honest with you. Really? One of those guys, one of those guys that you could just bring in the blitz off the edge every once in a while because he's that he's that the same exact size and I think he's a little faster than Jabril Peppers, to be honest with you. Interesting. And I I, I mean, where do where do you see this this guy being put out? I, I, that's one of my last tier guys there. Yeah. I just don't see I just don't see I just don't yeah. see him anywhere on the field. I got one question before that. Do you consider the Marvin Lill edge rusher or defensive tackle? Defensive tackle. I am tired okay. of hearing this. Okay, so I'm glad I didn't include him in this episode. Okay, cool. Yeah. Because I, I believe he's a defensive tackle. I don't know where they're getting edge from. It bothers me. I think Nick Nick Benito, out of all the guys that we named, is probably the most raw and the hardest to find a spot for on your roster for. I yeah. mean, that's just my opinion. Nate, what, what do you think about it? I absolutely agree. I mean, that's my knock on Nick Benito. The problem for the guy is that he, he clearly has talent. It's just yes, tough to find how to use that talent. Like, he, he's got such an in-betweener skill set where he just – he doesn't have any particular traits of one really strong position. It's going to be an interesting case of can any particular coach, any particular position guy, any particular franchise find that Cinderella fit, find that ability to make him work in some role. Uh, he's, I don't think he's ever going to be an every down guy. I, I just don't see it for him. I don't think it's in the cards. But I, I do think somewhere – Someone will find a role for this kid. I think he's a little too talented to just fall out of the league. I think he's a little too talented to disappear. Whether he's a starter at any team, that's less likely, but I think he'll be somewhere. And then one other name that is someone I want to mention here. And if if he's any if he has any sort of brains, he's not going to come into the draft this year. If he has any sort of brains, he's going to go back to college. And that's Zach Harrison out of Ohio State. Right. This is a guy with a lot of talent, and he had a really, really, really disappointing year this year. Just a lot of hype coming in and couldn't live up to it. It was a tough season, not much production, not a whole lot of impact on games. And you can see it's because the pieces just aren't quite coming together yet. His technique is spotty. His raw athleticism is great, but not enough to get it fully done. This is a guy that I'm looking at as someone who should 100% go back to college Take another year, take another year of development, another spring football, summer camp, fall camp, and then go into another season and see if you can be that guy for Ohio State. But if he doesn't, if this man makes a decision and says, you know what, I'm done at Ohio State, they got Jack Sawyer coming in behind me, I don't think I'm going to be able to start, I need to roll the dice and go into the league, he is in that last tier for me. And I think based off of last season, He's probably a UDFA for, for production right. and for all that stuff. But <laughs> right. wait, I, I will say he's in my last tier in the very bottom just because it's worth the flyer. It's worth the ability to say, okay, he's not going back to college, but maybe if we stash him on the roster and understand that he's not going to be for this year and understand that he's not going to do anything this season for us, this is a guy that I'm willing to spend like a six-round pick on and say, hey, let's get you in the system, let's get you coached up, and we'll see if maybe you got, you got a future. I want to mention him. I don't think he should go into the draft. I don't think he will. I think he'll be smart. I think he'll go back to Ohio State. But it's a name worth looking at. Anyway, though, Joel, you want to finish this up for us? Sure. Uh... Oh, internet problems. No, I didn't... Yeah, I'm going to Spectrum sucks. Yeah. Who, 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 is, that, who is that you were talking about, Nate? From Ohio uh, I was State? talking about Zach Harrison out of Ohio State. Okay. Ohio State. My, my first guy in the Tier 3, only because he's run into some problems, but damn it, he could have been a great player, is, is Michael Clemens from Texas A&M. Yeah. He, he had a little bit of difficulties in school, you know, some trouble – um, look, this this kid should have been right up there with us talking about the tier ones. He does have the ability to be a three down. I said, you know, ability. 
had he not screwed himself up and done the, the stuff he's done. But because of all that excess baggage, if I'm going to spend a sixth or a seventh round pick, I would, I might take a flyer on him if he's there only mm. because of the talent that the kid has. He's six, five, two seventy. You know, he does have long arms. He was destroying the LSU tackle a couple of games ago there, you know, making plays. He started out a house of fire. Like his first game, he had four uh, first football year. He had four sacks and five games, you know, developmental got yeah. a good first step, but because of the problems and everything, but this guy, look, if, if he's there, I'm going to interview him. I'm going to talk to him at his pro day, whatever, it, it get justifications on what the hell exactly happened. And if he's straightened up, you know what? Sometimes people take a chance on somebody like that and it turns, you know, bang, it's a hit. And, 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 and everybody's been saying we need to stop getting these book smart guys and get some dogs. Or maybe, you know what, the kid had a little bit of trouble in college, but don't hold that against him. This is the perfect example of somebody that could be a sixth round pick and come in here and hit for sure on with the Giants. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you look at the NFL, this is not, and I know we're, we're not in the business of endorsing poor decision making for sure, but if you look at the NFL, there's plenty of guys that got a second chance and made the most of it. I, again, yes. I bring up Victor Cruz. A yes. lot of people don't remember this. Victor Cruz wasn't a UDFA because he didn't have talent. Victor Cruz was a UDFA because he almost dropped out of school entirely and lost his entire chance mm -hmm. to play college mm -hmm. ball. This is a guy that maybe maybe he's that kind of guy. Maybe he is a UDFA. Maybe he's a sixth rounder. Maybe he's a seventh rounder. But if you give him a chance, it's possible. Right. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Right. Chris Carter. Yep. Same thing. Philly, <laughs> Philly draft. All right. And they cut him. They cut him. And the Eagles cut him. He went to Minnesota and took off, man. He got a second chance. Yep. But, uh, yeah, th th those are our tiers, man. We we just gave you about a full four tiers of players, of edge rushers in this draft. That's how deep this draft is. We actually got four four to five tiers of draft edge rushers in It's a hell draft. of a class. It is. Now, this is going to be the hard part. This is the part where we're going to decide who we're going to watch some film on before we get out of here. We're going to pick a guy from tier one, a guy from tier two, <laughs> a guy from tier three. Mm -hmm. Oh. I mean, so you know, you know, our tier ones were. I mean, I, ever, I think ever. I, I just sorry, Nate. Every, I think everybody's seen enough tier one, and I think I think people would be more if we could spend a little bit more time on the tier two or tier three because we're going to be in line for offensive linemen. I mean, the only way we're not taking one is if Hutchinson falls down to five. And That's true. On on that note, before we entirely move on from tier one. Just because I have been loyal to this man since before last season, I do. I feel the need to watch some Aiden Hutchinson tape. Just because okay. there will be some people who watch this show who maybe aren't such in-depth fans, who maybe just want to learn a little bit more about why this guy is so hyped up, maybe why he is such a beast and why people are talking about him the way okay. he is. Okay. And also, just because I love him. I mean, this is a guy, I, before last season, like for those who don't remember, last season, Aiden Hutchinson came in with a decent amount of hype, and then he got injured and missed a ton of time. And then he, he very wisely went back to college and had this beast of a year. This yes. is a guy I have been telling people about for as long as I can remember, and I would feel terrible if we didn't watch some tape on him. Okay. Right, so that's one. Tier one, we're going to watch some Aiden Hutchinson. I was going to do Hell it yeah. regardless, but <laughs> Joel right, is going to be overruled tier, one way or the other. <laughs> our tier two, uh, who, who we got? You know, our tier All two right. is going to be between Carl Loftus. He's in Joe's tier one, but he was in our tier two. So he, he was in like our Carl, one right. one B yeah, kind of tier, you know. So I, I put well, Carl Loftus. Ignite I'd like Gray, to see that to show you Johnson. guys how he disrupts the RPO a lot. Uh, th this guy sure, is good, yeah, man. Good he sets home. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put Carl Loftus in there. Who do you, who you want to see out of Enigbre or Jermaine Johnson or MyJ Sanders? I'd love to see. I'd love to see some more Jermaine Johnson just because I could watch that swim move all day. It's gorgeous. It's frankly, it's beautiful. Joe, you agree with that? Or you want to see a little bit of that's, Jermaine Johnson? All right. So oh, right now we got Carl Loftus, Hutchinson, and Jermaine Johnson. All right, tier okay. three. 
What about Cameron Thomas? What about uh, Arnold? Uh, I can't. I'd like to watch some Arnold Abicady if we can. Abicady. If okay, that's Penn State. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. So we got Karloftis, we got Hutchinson, we got Johnson, we got Epicetti, and we're gonna take one underrated guy. Let's watch. Let's watch some between Travis, Trevon Walker, and Cameron Thomas. Who who you wanna watch between them? Georgia. Or I'd I'd like to know your Davis thoughts State? on on uh, Georgia's Trayvon Walker. Okay, so we'll watch some Trayvon Walker. So. We're gonna do. Hold on, do before it. before we move, can you, can you put the picture of Walker up again? Is it just me, or behind that face mask, does he kind of look like Saquon Barkley a little bit? <laughs> I thought. Just, I just, thought I, I'm was... just noticing this now. In you this look moment. like G Herbo a little bit. You know that rapper G Herbo or whatever his name. Who <laughs> he looked like him? <laughs> who was the bulldog that wound up with the Alabama national championship hat? Was that him? Did you guys hear about that? Yeah, I did not hear about this. Yeah, they had Alabama on it. Didn't have Georgia. He's like, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> they all thought Alabama was gonna beat the brakes off of them, but did right. we all? We're, yeah, we're gonna watch some Hutchinson. Uh, don't have a picture of Carl Loftus, unfortunately. We're gonna watch some Jermaine Johnson. We're gonna watch some Trayvon Walker, and we're gonna watch some. Ah, uh, man, Ebe Kitty. I cannot say his it's last it's name. good enough, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, and we're gonna watch those. Just guys. get me so... out from between his legs, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not the place you want right. to be on a Penn State right. defensive player, apparently. Right. All right. Well, I already had the Hutchinson film pulled up. We're gonna put ourselves to the side here. I mean, honestly, you should Hutchinson. have Aiden Hutchinson tape pulled up on your computer twenty four seven. In right. my opinion. Right. But we're gonna watch this in a little bit of slow mo. We're gonna we're not gonna watch the full video because obviously it take all night. Mm -hmm. But this is the first play here. You know we're gonna let them see against the, the team that they always wanted to beat, Ohio State. They finally mm -hmm. got them after what four out the three years Hutchinson was there. They finally got them after how many years here. since? As you can see, that was a wash play there. They they fumbled the ball. So yep. watch. We're gonna. We're going to get into it. Ojabo, we, we get a double two for one because Ojabo's right here as well. Yeah. All right. So. And if if we're not going to do um, – I know we're, we're going to run short on time here, but there's one piece of Aiden Hutchinson tape that I think is better than anyone. For, for anyone watching this right now who maybe after we're done with Ohio State tape needs a little bit more, go watch Aiden Hutchinson versus Washington. Yeah. That is some oh, fantastic geez. film. Watch. That was some fantastic stuff. Watch how Aiden uses his hands, though. He gives that lineman a big jolt, and that's what sets him off balance and sets him up for the rip, the tear, the swim. Mm -hmm. Against Washington. Yeah. yeah. Against, uh, he he took Jackson Kirkland's lunch money in that game. Yes, right. He did. See how he hits but, with his hands? Yeah, see, how, see, his get, see his get off? Mm hmm. And this is he a guy that you off. always have to be double teaming, and on this play, that frees up someone else. Yep, he's being double teamed. Guess what? It frees up number twenty-five. Mm -hmm. Incomplete pass here. Right. He's always being double teamed. Just about. Mm -hmm. If he gets single, you see here he uses his hands. Look how he bulls rushes through him. Right. That's a big the boy. Guy, the guy play. The guy plays like the bolsters. I think he's just a tad slower. A little bit. I think he's just a tad slower than the, than the bolsters. I think he might have a bit like, more power too. Yeah, he has more power, and he's a tad bit slower. Yeah, yeah but see, see how he keeps his head low? That lineman can't get his hand on his shoulder pads very easy because right. he's low. Yeah, and look how he gets into the lineman's chest, too. Yes. His leverage exactly. on this play is excellent. And look how he forces this quarterback to throw it before he wants to throw it. Mm -hmm. not, off, so, not off balance, not just swinging wild, not just trying to do anything. It's all controlled chaos. Right. If that quarterback has enough time, he might throw it up to the receiver. He's able to jump and catch that. But who knows? Yeah. Comes well, you crashing. see how he plays the run? He comes yeah. all the way down, and he makes the tackle from the, the other side. And his buddy there, I can't tell who that is on that play. I I could be wrong, but I think he's – Oh, it's just a straight blitz. I was going to say, he might have missed his assignment there reading the quarterback, mm -hmm. but Hutchinson does a great job crashing down immediately. Look how close he is to the offensive lineman on this play. Right on that tackle's ass. 
But the prime part of this, this is why he's in my tier one, Ojabo. Yeah. Look at Ojabo hold his ground. Look Ooh, at yep. him hold his ground right there. Look Offensive tackle man. bends right back. Look at that. If he tries to go to the outside, he has a whole outside cover. Yeah, so that's, that's why his run is pushed to the inside. That's called holding contain. Do not let him bounce outside. Make him go into the middle where your meat is. It's also the football textbook definition of set the edge. Yes. Exactly. This is what Lorenzo Carter cannot do. Yeah. Lorenzo Carter is getting blocked all the way back here. Right. And not only does he set the edge and stonewall him, he's pushing him he back. He gets a to the right of him and make sure that this guy can't bounce it to the outside because either you're going to hold me or you're going to let me use my speed and make the tackle. You decide and, which one, Lyman. And he's doing right. this with one arm. Yeah. It's just this whole mentality from Michigan's defensive front seven is why they're they're producing in the last few years so many high draft picks in this front seven. Like Quiddy Pay was a guy who, who sort of overshadowed Aiden Hutchinson when mm -hmm. he was there last year. Like this is – I, I watch some of Michigan's tape, and I say, man, all I want for Christmas is their defensive mentality. Right. And you got the next play here. Now, you see, he lost this rep here. He yeah. doesn't win every rep. See, that's why I like watching film. Because mm -hmm. you watch highlights, you think that this dude's uh, unstoppable. I think he's but just getting he a little too cute here. here. Yeah, he's trying to get a little too cute. He's feeling himself, tries to do a spin move. Yeah. Good rep by the offensive line there yep. in general. He and this is – th yeah, sorry. This is this is a little bit of poor discipline here. This is an experience thing. You can't get to yes. that point in the rush and try and do a spin. That's not going to work. You got to right. commit to your move early, and if it's going to be a spin, you got to hit it at the right time. He gets all the way to the end of this kick set by the tackle, and then he tries to spin out of it. Nah. Should have spun either right he, there or a little bit before. Then. A little ahead, bit before, Joe. yeah. Well, I'm saying what, what he does is he tra he tries to, to set the edge. He gets washed out, knows it's not there. And at this point right here, he's overcommitted. Yeah. Yep. Once Instead went, of – Once he did that jump, it was over with. Go ahead, Joe. Right. Uh, well, see, th that's the object. You know, it looked like he was trying to come around outside edge because the quarterback – it's, it looks like the quarterback does a three-step drop instead of a five-step drop, and I think that's what Hutchinson was looking at. If we could rewind this and look at what the quarterback, how many steps he takes. Let's see. So he comes one, out two, one, three, two. Three, yeah, three, see, three. Yeah, instead of a four-step, five-step, which is what Hutchinson was setting up on, that short hitch by the quarterback is what helped – there again, when we talk about blocking schemes, this this tells you what an offensive lineman and how the quarterback helps the old lineman. That's yeah. what stopped Hutchinson right there. Yeah. Because if he would have went all the way back, Hutchinson would have had a great target. If he was back here, yes, Hutchinson yeah. would have probably got to him. Same thing with Ojabo at the bottom of the screen there. And also, mm -hmm. this is this is something we'll, we'll talk briefly because this is part of watching film. You see other players you're not particularly looking for. C.J. Stroud evolved his game over the course of this year, and this wasn't there consistently, but his poise in the pocket has gotten significantly better from start to finish of this season. Yeah, from when they play, I think they lost to Oregon in the beginning of the season. Oh, yeah, that was ugly. Lost to. Yeah, that game was pretty ugly. But yeah. if he takes a five-step drop, I think Ojabo grabs him before Hutchinson can get there. Yep. Yeah, probably. Because, look. Bang, he got him beat right there. If CJ yep. Stroud is still backing up, Ojabo has a straight line to him. Yep. Yeah. But it was only a three step drop. He hitched up and that saved him. Yeah. Good play by Ohio State. Good rep. Yep. Good play by CJ Stroud. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. See on this on this play here, they weren't ready. Yeah. This has doing. been a problem for Michigan all season. Just not quite ready on the ball. So they weren't ready. And Get almost another first down put on them. So I don't know what that rep was, but they weren't ready. Yeah. See, it looks like they're doing it again. Look, not ready again. Problem all season for Michigan. Yep. But they made a good play, but they still got the first down. Yeah. See, barely ready again. And look, yep. he, look at the double team there. And look, he fights through a double team and still gets on the tackle right there. He's just th – this is a pure power play. This is – when you're right – hold on. Right where you were a second ago at – hold on. Right there. At this moment, 
90 percent of edge defenders are out of this play it's done yep, right they're gone aiden hutchinson gets low in his in his hips he drives back, and by the time that guard, yeah, that guard thinks, okay, we double teamed him. I'm on to the next level. I'm going to try and block this linebacker. Aiden Hutchinson is blasting the tackle back, and he's coming exactly. back off that block to come back to the running back. Yes. Actually, I think that's the tackle on the tight end. Is it? I, I can't quite tell. I couldn't can, either. can you go full yeah, screen that's there? Yeah, tight end. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a tight end. Can you, can you go full end, screen the there, Pat? Uh... No, I'm actually in full screen. You are? Oh, okay. That's weird. All right. Keep going. Yeah, that's full screen. Oh, if I go no, that's full theater screen, mode. I won't be. Yeah, I won't be able to see anything. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, yeah. He's just oh, going to yeah. fight through this block, knife through the double team, and make a great play. And that tight end didn't have a chance. Oh, no shot. But this this is the guy that could fight through double teams. You see what I'm saying? All right. Yeah. That's tackle a, thought. Okay, he got enough of him. Nope. He gets in on the tackle. Good run by the running back right there, though. Got to wrap him up a little bit better, but he fought through a double team to get there. Yeah. The rest of the defense let him down there a little bit. Now, see, this is when you, when you give up the edge, this is what happens. Yeah. Yep. You cannot give up the edge. We have to have linemen that can set the edge. Yeah. Now, Hutchinson was at the bottom here, so that wasn't on him. And they weren't set. That's why this happened. Yep. yep. And if they do set out. the edge there, if they set the edge and 79 doesn't hold that block for just long enough, Hutchinson might be coming around to make the tackle from behind. Right. That could be that could be a TFL. Right. I think that's Ojabo that wasn't in his stance in yeah, time. Yeah, that wasn't set. It was Ojabo that wasn't set. Yeah. They killed themselves doing that. They, they, I'm telling you, this is a problem all year for Michigan. Right. Now Waste of see, talent. Now you see here, everybody gets blown up here. They, Their defensive tackles weren't that great. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, That's why tough. I'm not on Chris Hinton. Like, everybody else is on Chris Hinton from Michigan. I don't think they really did anything. <laughs> right. To be honest with you. And then their secondary got exposed against Georgia. Yeah. Yes, they did. I mean, how can you expect here? Michigan's secondary to run with Georgia's wide receivers? Right. Now, see here, I think Hutchinson just had an assignment here. Just get on this oh, guy yeah. and push him back. I think that was his assignment. And don't let anybody get to the outside. Yeah, right. that's, that's playing good time. Yeah, their defensive tackles are absolutely getting mauled. Look at, look the, at those look at gaps, the, man. Yeah, look at those He gaps. had either A gap. Same thing here. Once he again, holding his ground well. Right yeah, he's holding his ground. And this, this is what we're talking about before for reference. This is what he does that a guy like Kayvon Thibodeau doesn't do. Right. Exactly. Good recovery yeah. there from the DB. Right. You see how he pushes that tackle back into Stroud? Yeah. And he made Stroud just a tad bit inaccurate because if Stroud was all the way accurate, that's a touchdown. Yeah. So maybe that push that he got that tackle in and got in his face a little bit made him throw the ball at an angle that he went, didn't want to throw. And can we and go back to the beginning of this drop? Like, yeah. I think Hutchinson... In, in the very beginning of this rep, might have lost it a little bit. And this is the difference between him and other guys in this class. When he's lost the rep, it's not over yet. If you beat right. him with footwork as a tackle, he can still put his head down and say, I'm going to drive. you got to hold me. Exactly. And that's what he did. Because the tackle Saw does a great get job of getting him. around him, and then it's just speed to power. Yep. Saw that he couldn't use speed to get past him, just bull rushed him. Right. Here we go again. This, this is exactly what speed to power looks like on that exactly. last play, and that's and look beautiful. Look how he gets to him. That's, that's gorgeous. Nice inside there. rip move. He comes in. He sets him up for the outside, comes inside, rips up. The guy can't get his hands on him. I'm, I'm free to the quarterback. This is what the finesse moves looks getting, like. The tackle is getting ready for the bull rush again. Look at him. He's going yep. to try to anchor down for the bull rush, but Hutchinson gets into his chest. His feet are out of whack. Him. Yep, hooks him. 
and it's over with. They're I mean, this this is what we're talking about when when we say an edge rusher has to have a bag of tools. Aiden Hutchinson's bag is serious. A lot of it is just just pure, just smart. Look this at is, him, smart. Been setting him up the whole time. And and this, this is, is what a really strong edge rusher can do. He's yes. in the tackle's head. He's got a two bedroom apartment in in seventy nine's head. <laughs> All right. What, he's he's what, set up camp. He's there. This, He's he just going to cut right, right back inside. He lost right here. Yep. Because he thought he was going to get that bull rush, and he was going to kick out, and now he's like, oh, shit. He's cold, mm-hmm. and he's going to the inside. So he's done. His feet are not set. He's done. That's great stuff. It is, man. That's the, that's why he's so right, high on our list, guys. How, right. You see how he's widening out? Because he's yep. like, either he's going to try to bull rush me, I could, I could anchor down, or he's going to try to get to the outside. And, and before you before you play, uh, okay, just in that second right there, just hold on. Right when his feet widen out, this tackle, right sort of in this moment, yeah. Hutchinson is, is doing his little stutter step here. And the tackle mm-hmm. thinks, and we saw this earlier, Hutchinson's going to try and go around him again to the wide side. And in a second here, in a couple of strides or maybe one stride, he's going to think, okay, he's coming back. Now it's going to be a speed to power. And his feet widen out to try and get a nice wide base to try and absorb that bull rush, anchor, and not get pushed back. And at that moment, he's th- this is an oh shit moment for an offensive lineman right here because yep. Aiden Hutchinson has just stolen this man's lunch money. Yeah, yeah. because and if you go back. That arm underneath there, right there, is over. Hands, wow. footwork, natural athleticism, all on display. And then to beat that, what Aiden did right there, if you could go back to the offensive lineman, just for a, a different analysis here, because we've been talking how well Hutchinson is, this offensive lineman really wasn't beat. He beat himself in his own head trying to think what Hutchinson was doing. Yeah. So when he gets to that wide stance, instead of the foot going right, that foot right now should be back. The left foot should be coming backwards. Mm-hmm. Not to the side. He should be set up seeing that he stopped. You, when, when you see your defender stop, you back up a little bit and no. you reset your feet. Because he doesn't reset his feet right here, he's already out of position. If instead of him putting his weight on his right foot right here, if he would have took his left foot and just stepped backwards, he would have been in a better position to stop Aiden from coming inside and still would have been able to wash him around the outside. But because of his, his footwork. Yeah. Look at his feet. His yes. feet telling you everything. His feet yes. is the reason why he gave up this sack. And, and the problem is Hutchinson did that, yeah. he's done. Either you're going to pull him down, you're going to tackle him, or you're going to let him get to the quarterback. And the problem with trying to, to defend, I, I say it's ironic you're on offense, the problem trying to defend against Aiden Hutchinson's pass rush is you have to be perfect with everything. Your hands yeah. and feet have to be together. And on this yeah. rep, the problem is none of it was there. He right. didn't get a stab in because he's too afraid of the chop. His foot, his footwork wasn't in place because he was too afraid to a the speed and b the speed to power. And Hutchinson's just got a freebie to the inside. Exactly, and this is the result: you get sacks on quarterback. Okay. Edge rushers Why versus offensive tackles one? can be a lot of mind games sometimes, and that's what we're talking about here. All right, that's why he's number one, man. All right, that's what's the next guy one? we got up here, Pat? All right, I, 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 I got so excited, goosebumps right now. <laughs> God, Aiden, so go. it, it just it hurts my soul. Whenever you watch players, this is the problem with scouting. No matter how rare, and not rare, no matter how obscure you think the player you found is or how much of a gem you think they are, eventually the media will find them, and sooner or later they will be a first-round player. It's depressing. Who do we got here? Let's see, we're gonna see uh, Carl versus Iowa. The powerhouse. Oh, we we'll get a little Linderbaum in here too. Mm. Yeah. See, I'm trying to give you two people at once, man. I'm looking out. Tyler for Linderbaum. Him. We we gotta talk about him when we do our interior offensive line episode because he is worth mm-hmm. discussing. Yes. For more reasons than just he's really good, he is worth talking about. All right. Let's see, Spencer Peters. There go Mr. Karloftis right there. Let's see what he Bunch does form- on this play, gentlemen. Bunch formation at the bottom. He's going to try to disrupt that. Yeah, he's going to try to disrupt that 
obviously he wasn't a part of that play as far as rushing the no. pass or anything. He was just out there to disrupt. And Purdue's defense was absolutely terrible, besides Carl Loftus and company. I swear, um, every year, Purdue is just, they're due for one big upset win and then a whole lot of crushing. Right, losses. As you can see, he fights off that, that tackle up there, but he's out of the play. They're running play. away from him. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you be if you're playing Purdue? Exactly. See this Setting right the here? edge. Yep, he made sure the edge was a set. I mean, it was set. Yep. Make sure nothing there, comes out there towards that's, his way. That's called stay at home, not trying to overdo too much or get caught out of position. That was his yeah. job. His job is to stay out there, not to come crashing in. And exactly. I do like a defensive lineman that knows how to stay disciplined on his assignment. Yes. Let's look at Linda Bomb right here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Linda Bomb's the only one only one getting this block. He's still blocking the dude. He's still, still blocking. blocking. <laughs> it's 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 incredible. So much so much Iowa tape is just oh there's Linderbaum. There's right. the rest of the line. Right. <laughs> there's Linderbaum. There's the offensive guard ten yards behind him. Right. Yeah. Well, That's gonna be an interesting episode when we get to Tyler Linderbaum, man. Mr. Karloff is number five for Purdue. Man, I just like watching this guy's film, man. He he's pretty. He's a monster, man. He's stronger than I thought he was. Yes. He he's just he's nastiness, you know. That's he's, George Karloff. This. He's got a good first step. Watch his first step when he starts. To, if he's able to rush. Right. Yeah, there. he's off the ball before the tackle is almost. Right. See, he gets double teamed by Leonard Baum and the right tackle there. So. Yeah, He's if you get a double team by Linderbaum, you're you're screwed. Right. And this guy, I think it was supposed to be a stunt, but he didn't do a stunt early, nope. early enough. He allowed was Linderbaum it? to get all the way out there to the edge. Can, can we can we watch it again? I think it was supposed to be a stunt. Watch. Comes off, hits. Yeah, yeah it, was it was supposed, supposed to, be to be a, a twist. Is I I'm torn because I don't know if that's. It looks like it's supposed to be a twist. It also might just be that Karloftis beats his man and the other guy's just standing there. Right. That That's also true. very possible. But again, on this rep, we're, I'm totally getting sidetracked by Tyler Linderbaum. But this is what, when, when you say a center finds work, this is yep. finding oh, yeah. work from a he center. He found some work right here. He's, he he's finding work. work. Yeah. Look at he that says, base. Look at that bend. Straight yep. up and back. Hands in front. No, he's not dipping his head. Jesus. We watched the wrong film here because this is going to be Lin We're supposed to be talking about edges. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got to watch Carl Loftus versus anybody else. We're going to get sidetracked. Tyler Linderbaum, the man is just nasty. He's got a mean streak a mile wide. When he Look wants to that. block someone, he wants to destroy them. Look at that. That right tackle got beat. But Carl, I mean, but... <laughs> It's bullying. It's bullying is what it is. That's what, that's what I want my center to do. Find some work. Put somebody oh. on there. And he does it rep up. in, rep yeah. out. You will never see Tyler Linderbaum standing on an island by himself, just, right. just lost in space. He always knows where to go. He always finds work. He always helps out his linemen. And it's good because the rest of his linemen need help. <laughs> The freaking guy outruns the running backs on this team. I saw him three yards downfield, just a trucking man smoking people. I was like, are you kidding right. me? Well, Carl Loftus here, he's not having a good day right here because, man, they cut them. They're trying to do everything to keep him from out of there. Right. And that's what happens when you're the best edge rusher on a team of nobodies. Right. Here he goes again. And by the way, this game plan that I was trying to do on uh, George Karloftis, and it's working because Purdue's, Purdue's defense is pretty bad other than him, mm -hmm. this is what Washington tried to do against Aiden Hutchinson because they were double-teaming him, they were running away from him, they were throwing yeah. screens to the opposite side, God, and then they found out, oh, wait, David oh. Ojabo exists, huh? Oh, man, right. he almost got there on that one. He, he comes off the edge. This is what he brings. When he gets, he has one of the quickest first steps in this God. class. Yeah. This rep is lost for the tackle before it even started. Right. Yes. Like He's the, done right there. That Look moment right there, that is what offensive linemen see in their nightmares. Right. Right. And he gets past them. Should have been a hole. And he still puts a hit on the quarterback. <laughs> but that's what Karloftis brings. Yeah. That, that explosion right there is ridiculous. 
I mean, this this right tackle, he knows the snap count, and he's still getting beat off he the ball. He lost right there. That tackle right, it's over. Done. He's looking at him knowing that he's going to get past him. Yep. All you can hear is, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's in there. I mean, oh. for God's sake, it's like he's hearing the snap count himself. That's insane. Right. right. But that's that's what Carl Loftus bring. Look at it. There's and that to me, right that's here. what I'm I'm concerned with some of the other guys in this class. Yes. I don't like I, I like a guy that has that instinctually. That's something I don't want to have to teach you. This right like the play before this oh, where he was doing that. Right there. But Call the play before the that, right when when he's got that big get off, that's what I want to see intrinsically. That's what I love to see out of a player just like that moment right there. You can't teach that, you know? Right. You can't teach that. Like the get off, he's done. He's you you can't man. teach this. He's beat. Already. Look at the hands. Look at the hands. Right. Yeah, you know, that's. Doesn't okay, let himself get tied up. Hand. Yeah, you see him use his hands to where he can't put his hands on him and try to get in front of him. He chopped him down. Yep. That was pretty good. That was pretty damn good right there. What a hit. He was still he was still swiping because he wasn't sure if the guard was going to try to come at him this or not. This right here is pure power. That's why I yeah. like about Carl. This is pure power. <laughs> right, That's Big Ten football right there. <laughs> he got that tackle moonwalking. And back by there. the way, but like once we get to the end of this play, I want I want to point something out again. Like you see the the interior defensive lineman and Carl Loftus both blow their guy off the ball. Right. Like this is just mean. That's an outside move from the interior guy and bull rush from Carl Loftus. And Tyler Linderbaum is standing there saying, what happened, guys? What's going on? I destroyed my guy. What did you guys do? <laughs> right. He's destroyed him. Wait, hold on. Linderbaum just just keep, keep, keep it going for a second. There's one moment I want to point out here. Pause. Tyler Linderbaum is saying, all right, I got it. I got it. I got it. Right. Oh, shit. What happened there? <laughs> Something right. went wrong. That's that unfortunate. Why is this guy locker. cheering? I no, blocked that, that's, him out of the play. What the hell is he cheering about? The majority of cheering from Tyler Linderbaum's opponents was when the other guy got the sack. Yeah. Right. Sorry, I am just completely sidetracked here. That is my bad, but come on. I know. How could you not be? Yeah. That's the beauty of watching football, man. But you already see this bull rush right here by Carl Loftus is ridiculous. Like it's a nice finesse move from the the guard look there, that. but look how hard this guy's moving back. Look no. at that, oh. <laughs> like Nate Soda. Oh, stop! Don't say that. Oh. Don't say that. Yeah, God Nate willing, Brady. he won't be here next year. Yeah, see, this yeah. is what Joe was talking about, like the RPO. Yeah. Like if that was an RPO, look how he reads it. He makes sure that quarterback is covered at every, at every right. Angle. Yeah, if this is play action, he's going to destroy Petrus. If right. this is play action, that dude's dead. If this is play action, Spencer Petrus is going into concussion protocol. Right. Because <laughs> you know George Karloftis is not pulling punches. See, that's set the edge. Can't yep. bounce yep. it back. You let your teammates make a play. Exactly. Good, solid stuff. Yeah. He's going to come off the edge. He's set up for a rush. Swim move, move hands, move hands, swipe, swipe. Got good caught rep up for the tackle. There. That was a good that was a good rep for the tackle right there. Yeah, it yeah, was. Good, good rep from the left tackle. He got caught up in the wash, got washed out. Instead of continuing outside, tried to come back in, but was too far gone. Yeah, he got tried him to come back because he saw the quarterback stepped up. That's what yep. we mean by the quarterback helping out your offensive line. Yep. He saw the quarterback step up, hitch up, and so he tried to go back to the inside. He was already anchored, ready for that. And yep. this is a moment right here where where uh, George Karloftis could use a spin move. Yes. And this yeah. is the rep where George Karloftis, if there's one thing I'd love to see him develop, it's a spin move. Yes. He's a power rusher. It's a little bit much to ask for. But if I was going to say one thing to make him a perfect prospect, it's if he had the spin move as some of the other guys we're looking at in this this video, yes. he'd, he'd be unstoppable. Oh, jabo has got a hell of a spin move. There, yeah, there's a few does. guys in this class that have yeah. really, really smooth spin moves. Yes. Your boy Jermaine Johnson's on that list. Yeah. Anyway, though. Yeah. We're at a minute 18, Pat. I don't know how long you want this video. Yeah, this is the last rep from uh, Carl Loftus. 
That's pretty just good rep, too. To show, yeah, I just want to show his bull rush is probably tops in this. Yeah. In, in, in this draft. Like Look at that step. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. That first step of his bull rush is ridiculous. He just moves people, man. Yeah. He does. Can't teach that. I would say I'd say Hutchinson close second on the bull rush, but Karloff is for sure his best power rusher. Yep. Let's get to Jermaine Johnson. This guy. Whoa. Wait, do you do you actually have caps lock on at all times? I thought it was a joke on Twitter. Yeah, I do, don't I? Interesting. Anyway though. Uh, I, I remember the first game I flipped on when I watched him was versus uh, South Carolina. Or, sorry, not South Carolina, uh, NC State, because I wanted uh-huh. to see if he had reps against Ecom. And uh, that was interesting. Oh. Now we got some highlights here. Yeah. yeah. He had a game against Notre Dame, man. Yes, he did. This yeah, is what is he? Number he's number eleven, right? And th- this yeah, is the problem with highlights. Th- this isn't a Jermaine Johnson highlight, right? This is the problem with when you watch highlights because people who make highlight videos, credit to them, they make good content. They're they're looking for any time he makes a sack, any time he makes a tackle in space, and this is a sack, exactly. but it's not a quality sack. Right. His other teammates blew the line off the ball, and credit to Jermaine, credit to Jermaine Johnson, he was there to pick up the pieces, but this is not his sack. You can call it a coverage. Eh, I wouldn't call it a coverage sack. I'd say the rest of the defensive line helped him out there. Big well, time. they did, but you know the coverage was got there so the line could get a push. Sure, sure. Uh, let's let's go to Miami and see what he did. Hell yeah. Let's see what he's doing. God, you remember when Florida State was good? Yeah, I right. do. I don't. As you can see, <laughs> Jermaine Johnson is going to be right here. So, Dwayne. It's a screenplay. Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders. Damn. That's a minute ago. Bobby Bowden. Jermaine Johnson, he got a little bit of a bull rush, but it's not quite like Karloftis in there. Nah. That's why I put him a tier below those guys. Absolutely. Right here, this tackle should be beat automatically. You should be pressing more to his chest and dipping. Because this quarterback yeah, yeah. is not helping us. Helping us. At, at that moment right, right there, there. Yeah. At, at that moment earlier in the rush when you had paused it, that's a moment where he has the leverage if he, if he can accompany it with technique to be able to make this a sack easy money. Right. Right there, like he's got the outside shoulder uh, and the tackle. What you never want from an offensive line standpoint is to be 90 degrees perpendicular to the ball. And right now exactly. this tackle is completely facing the sideline. That's worst case scenario at this depth. So yep. Jermaine Johnson, if you can polish this up, there is an immediate sack on the field right here. This he needs a little bit ripping. of coaching. This is yep. dip and rip. This is get yep. that he shoulder down, get around the corner. Underneath that guy's That's, arm yep. And make it where that, that hand is only coming right here and he should be grabbing him. Mm-hmm. Because get around the corner. not even moving. Yep. That's why I say he could be a later round first rounder because there's some teams that are in the 22 to 30 that could use an edge rusher, but don't need one right now and let him That's develop. Fair. Yeah. But you know it'd be a quality pick for some for some of these later teams that are in the playoffs to get sure. some depth. Sure. But he's the only one I'm taking outside of the top four. Yeah. He definitely needs some polish though. Yeah. yeah. Overall, I call it a good rep. Now you see right here, this is where we say he's a little bit slow coming off the line. Yeah. You see, he's not like a Carlotta's or a Hutchison or even a Thibodeau coming and it, off the line. It's still not a bad first step. Yeah, it's, it's just not, not as bad. It's just not as good as his best. It's not elite. Right. I say that. It's nowhere near elite. And because of that, the tackle who takes a pretty bad kick step can still be able to recover. And that's well played from Jermaine Johnson. Yes. Right, that was well played. That was that's well that's played. like credit to Florida State. This is smartly done here. He he knows he's got his teammate to cover the running back on on the oh not yeah. the running back that's that's a receiver coming around. He knows the wing's gonna get picked up here. He's got help, so he knows he can play contain on the quarterback, takes a beat, and then gets after him to force the incompletion. Yep. That's good stuff. That 
That was very good defense by the whole team right there. Yeah, yes. that's good team defense. See there, he washes himself out. I don't know if he yeah. was running, but it got picked off. So <laughs> I don't under yeah, I don't understand why he didn't do a swim move there yeah. to the inside. He would have definitely. I'm not course, entirely. Let's let's just watch this again. Yeah, he holds contained to the outside. I think he's just fooled on this play. That, I, that might, I he's he's, he's expecting something that ain't coming. He's just getting blocked up by a tight end, and he's not expecting it. It's I don't I don't know what happened there to be honest. But they did get the pick, so I guess it worked out, I guess. Right. Can't this say that for I a lot of Florida State games. One. See his get off. Mm. Here's where Thibodeau kind of struggles, too, the running game. Yep. This is what I'm talking about. This is what, what I, Thibodeau what... looks like in a run game. No. It's kind of like there's the same, but – but Thibodeau's got a hell of a lot better pass move. Yeah. yeah. I think, for me, the thing that defines Thibodeau in, in the sense that I would I say raw, and raw is like that blanket term people use. I think the thing that defines him is that he's that animal in the pass game. He doesn't really have that same vibe in the run game. He's, he's not right. that dog in the run right. game, you know. He's not as hungry for it. And yeah, see, Johnson's get-off is, is not, not impressive to me. No. Not at all. Marlo I mean, that's what loses down. him this rep. Yep. Tackle beats him to the spot, sets his feet nicely, gets his hands on him, it's done. So when we say, guys, that there's a significant yep. drop-off between Tier 1 and Tier 2, this is what we mean. That's what I was saying. When I say there's there's a decent gap between the Ojabos yes. and the Karloftises and then the Jermaine Johnsons, you know? Yes. And then you get into Maji. Maji. My Jai, Maji, My Jai. Yeah, whatever. We'll learn in the NFL. Right. <laughs> God, See, this, this must have been here. a toilet bowl. Right. See, this this right here, this is not impressive. When I'm looking at film, actual film, this is why I don't look at highlights. Because this highlight, yeah. he's an absolute monster in this highlight. Exactly. But I, I had a lovely – Yeah. I, I had a lovely, I'll, I'll put quotation marks around it, conversation with some Florida State fans on Twitter who are just absolute homers saying, they were saying this is the best edge in the class. And I'm like, guys, come on. Yeah. What, what are we uh, saying here? Sure. They're saying, no. oh, th this guy doesn't watch film. He doesn't, you know, okay, whatever. Show me this rep and say he's the best He's the best edge in the class. I'm seeing too many reps against Miami's right tackle. He's not even a good right tackle. He's getting, He's getting held up. He's getting stonewalled. Every Man, time. remember, remember a time when we could have watched a Miami Florida State eval game and and not right. made jokes about the teams playing. Right. Different days, man. Different days. You know, watching this film right here, probably <laughs> not on my board in the first Ed. round. Oh hell no! I would say. Watching this film right here, I might make him a, a mid second round pick. To be honest, that's where I place him. Well, it's it's looking that way, but it's only one game too. Yeah, right. Yeah, see, that's a good I rep. Mean, see, that's, see, that's a good rep there. That's because the quarterback held onto the ball for freaking ever. And he never stepped up. Right. All this quarterback has to do is step that's, up right here, and he has a whole lane, but he stayed there. He's doing exactly what Daniel Jones used to do and what Mike Wood Oh, did. stop. We don't have to talk about this. Yeah. No more no more See, depression. And, and what's really going to be a good value is is when we go to the next guy after watching this. You right. saw Tier 1, 1B, Tier 2, and Tier 3. It's going to be a little rougher. So, I mean, he does win the rep here, but – here on this show, we're going to get you to the nitty-gritty, man. The only reason why he mm -hmm. made this play is because this quarterback is not great, does not have great pocket awareness. All he has to do is hitch up twice, and he's, he has a free lane. But he stays man. there in one spot, and he gets hit. Right. Everything you need to make a high-quality, fun football game, Florida State and Miami have not had for years. Right. right. It's depressing. The offensive line and quarterback play out of two of the, the most well, valued programs in the country has been so sad. I mean, watch the offensive lineman right here. He gets lost. 
Look at 55. Look at, the, why, look, why look at 55. <laughs> right. What are you doing, 55? L look at this moment. L like, that moment right there was depressing. Definitely look how long 55 is just standing there with yards between him and the next guy. Yeah, like, come on, buddy. You want him to go find some work against this guy right here. Exactly. I guess to try to convince the quarterback to step up to say he got a free lane here. But, hey. I mean, we're going to get to the next guy, which is, I believe, uh, Arnold Ebicady. Arnold. Yep, Arnold. Uh, this is our last last guy? Yeah. Yeah. This, this is going to be the last guy of the video. And for those who have not watched Arnold Ebicady's tape, I'll give you a little preview while, while Pat's pulling it up. He is very, very raw. He is a freak athlete who doesn't really know quite what he's doing yet, but he is a guy that can beat you with athleticism, and he can occasionally make some really nice moves. So Arnold Abicady is a guy that his biggest concern for me isn't so much that he's raw. It's more about the fact that his first step is wildly inconsistent. And I think, that if I remember correctly, this is a good game to show it. Mm-hmm. He's 17? Uh, yeah, he's 17. 17. You see that inside move right there? Yep. If I'm basing it off one play, I'm liking him more than Johnson right now. Right. <laughs> and that's but. why, Pat, don't base off one play. <laughs> right. right. Ooh, that was a good move right there, though, guys. You got to give is. him that. And notice, that so this is, this is just a really nice use of, you can see his hips and you can see his hands. That's what you're seeing in sync here, because Arnold Ebicady, as he moves past the tackle, he's going to swipe past and get the tackle completely going the wrong way for a free land at the quarterback. If I remember exactly. correctly, that was the best play of the game for him, and the guy who edited the video together showed that first, and that's going to be later in the video. So we might not actually see that rep. And here's what I don't like about him already. Mm -hmm. Right here. I guess he did this because this guy's right here. But if he's on the edge by himself and he does this, that's it's a free lane. Major yards. That's mm. major yards. And yeah, even if this is that, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. even if this is let's uh, granted, you gotta you gotta know your competition in the NFL. But I believe this is still at a point when Tank Bigsby is still in the game. So that should be with the ball right now, Tank Bigsby, and he is one of the better running backs in college football when healthy. You have to understand, number five uh -huh. at this moment is on an island with one of the best running backs in college football. And let's say Tank Bigsby makes a move and he sees green grass to the bottom of the screen. Granted, it's, it's a tough move to make, but if you're facing a shifty running back like a Saquon Barkley when healthy or like oh, yeah, Christian McCaffrey. Step in and go right back out. Mm -hmm. There's nothing but green grass. Let's yep. see what he does on this rep. Yeah, see, there ain't too much you can do about anything right there. He went low on him, so I want yeah, to yeah. see my defense on hand push him on his back and get over him. But that's can't do too for, much for those who, right yeah, sorry, for those who who don't watch a, a ton of football, that's called crabbing from an offensive lineman, and it's one of those things you only do once in a while. And when you do it once in a while and you do it well, there's kind of nothing you can do against it as a defensive player, right? Exactly. Just drive your knees into his back. He ain't gonna do it you again. See, yeah. You see that? You see how he had good get off on that one play, but right here he's he, stuck in the mud. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't even move. Look at that. He doesn't he's even move. Last. And this is what I'm talking about. When I when I said Arnold Ebicady is boomer bust, it's gonna be either he gets that get off consistently, and it's what we saw before every play, or you're gonna have problems because you cannot make it in the NFL when you have reps like that. Yep. That's bad. Yeah, it's like he, he didn't even move, bro. Yeah. You can't have that. And again, it, it comes down to Penn State has a lot of these guys that they're raw freak athletes, and that's the play. So that's, yeah, the, one. that's the one. Like, they can do that. They have the agility. They have the athleticism. They have the fluidity. But they're just not complete football players yet. These are guys that maybe switch positions. Maybe Penn State's finding a role for him in the defense, and they say we can't leave this athlete on the sideline because you, you see the upside of plays like this one, and then you just got to live with the downside of ones like the one before it. Yeah, see right here? 
outside and end move. This look guy at the hands. Not know, yeah. This guy does not know how to stop that outside inside move. And he gets tortured every time. And the hand usage there was great. Hands in sync with feet, which is a big thing for edge rushers. As he was stepping inside, his hands are he's he's moving that arm of the tackle away from him, getting it off his body so he has a clear lane. That's good stuff. You see, he tries to do that move every time because that's the only thing in his repertoire right now. Yeah. It's see, unfortunate. He's trying to do it again. And this is what I'm talking about. This is why I said I think Auburn is a really good game to show what Arnold Ebicady is because he was hot and cold all night in this game. It was either there or it wasn't on one rep to the next. I like this rep here. He stacks the offensive line and he gets in on the tackle. I like that rep there. That showed a little power. Yeah, that's this is what I'm saying. He's a raw athlete. He's got speed. He's got power. He's got agility. He just doesn't have anything else yet. See what I'm saying? Same move. Same yep. move. That tackle is terrible. That's, that's his bread and butter. Yep. That's his he bread doesn't and have butter. a ball, doesn't have a spin. You know, I mean, Joel, can you really call inner. it bread and butter when he didn't have anything else? Well, that's that's what I uh, – he, he he wants to work that move the most. And, and I, man, if he had a spin move to go with that hand swipe, that he I mean, could really set some tackles up to be a – Or even – no, like I grant you, there's a lot of coaching to be done with this guy. I think a lot of a lot of outside linebackers or or defensive line coaches might see this and see a beautiful masterpiece they can create. <laughs> but even even before you get into the nitty gritty of hand usage and the ins and outs of of how you want to cross chop and swipe and all that good stuff and spin moves and the more complex stuff, if you just added a speed to power to his game, he's instantly going to be a lot better because the tackle. The only thing he can do <laughs> is set inside and allow Ebicady to, to try and just swipe right into him and try an I, inside way right into him. If Ebicady's got a speed to power and he just keeps going around the edge into that kick set, lowers his shoulder and drives, there's nothing the tackle's going to be able to do to counter it. I, I, I don't know if he has the drive to be that type of edge rusher. Mm -hmm. and when look, when he, you say drive, he, what do you he, mean by he, that? He, he like he wants to learn new moves. Oh well, we'll we'll see. But I, I is there is there something you know that I don't? I haven't heard anything well, about character stuff. Well, no, not, I'm I'm not saying that, but I'm looking at I'm, I'm looking at a performance on a game tape right now, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing slow to get off the ball. I'm seeing not really dedicated to the run, but if he's going to come on the edge or a rush, he seems to show a little bit more enthusiasm. I, now this is the first real film I've broken down of him. Sure. Okay, so this is just first insight as to what I'm seeing, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people watch it. So from somebody who just said that first time watching, what would you say to that where it doesn't look like he's he's slowing down on the runs, but he gets hyped for the pass? Yeah, I, I my disagreement there is I, I see what you're saying. I just think it's less about a motivation thing or a wanting it in the run game thing. I think it's more he just doesn't know what he's doing. Okay. I think this okay. is a guy that, if I remember correctly, he's yeah, one of the I many players to transition positions doing. on Penn State's defense. Okay. He is not uh, an edge rusher by trade. I think he just doesn't know what he's doing yet. Okay, that's fair. That's a fair analysis hey. because you know I, I'm sitting here trying to tell you what I'm seeing first time view. Sure, sure. You know, and, and you know what that does make sense if he transferred from playing inside linebacker to edge. I don't or, remember. Or, or I don't know what he was in high school. I mean, sometimes I you see a wide receiver come to edge or defensive lineman or linebacker. You know, God only knows. But he uses the same move every time. It, it, he, he tries to do it to the right or he tries to do it to the left, and that's not going to cut it. I mean, that was a decent bull rush right there, but I think this tackle is not that good. Right. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, he transferred from Temple the year before. Mm -hmm. And I I cannot tell what position he played. I might be I might be confusing him with someone else. I thought he was one of the many Penn State guys who just again I just don't think he knows what he's doing yet. Okay. I don't think he knows how to play the position fully because I think in the run game I think it's less about dedication to the run and more about this is a guy that when he keys the run the only thing he's trying to do is win with strength and just pushes his lineman back. I don't think he knows how to set an edge yet. Okay, that's fair. That's true, and right here he actually did pretty well. Just got to make right. the tackle. Yeah, yeah, he could have shed the, the guy tackle. went right, shedded yeah. the guy mm -hmm. went left. Yeah, 
But that was and a I, pretty good rip. And this is entirely what I'm talking about here when I say I Pat, you you can like call it what you want personally. I say boomer bust. I think this is a guy either he's going to get coached up and that athletic potential is going to going to blossom into a beautiful player, or I it's not. S- I see that because he learned on that first crab block and that that last one he swiped them away. Mm-hmm. It didn't and, get yeah. taken out. And you, you're you're talking about this like w- when you have an offensive lineman crab in you. The, the only real effective counter for that is to make him not want to do it anymore. Right. So that's right. what he's trying to do here. He actually did a pretty good job setting the edge right there, too. Yeah. I think he's got great potential. I just I don't think there's going to be a team willing to take a massive risk on him yet. Right. Third round? I see I see third round in this yeah, guy. Third yeah, round. I, I see high third round. Yeah. I'm actually liking him a little bit better. There go our guys. Saquon. Yeah, they're Barkley. Uh, I'm actually liking him a little bit better than Jermaine Johnson. A tad bit better. I've been talking about this kid, so. Ah, there you got crab yeah, again right there. <laughs> yeah. Again, you, you got to take this kid's film with what it is, you know? It's a I, raw, not unfinished doesn't describe it. It's a raw, half-baked so prospect right that there. needs time. Yeah, yes. and this, this is what we're talking about. And again, yeah, I think Auburn's out. game film is perfect for describing what he is because there's reps Ooh, where it's there shit. and reps where it's not. He knows how to work that in out move, man. That's his move. Yeah, it is. Right there. Got in him. out. Got him. He he looks like a running back, doesn't he? Just trying to yeah. juke out the tackle. That was a nice ass catch right there, too. Yeah. But he yeah. knows how to work that in out move for sure. Yeah, but All uh right. Yeah, well, what do you say, guys? I think this was a yeah. pretty solid yeah. first episode yeah. of the pick is in. Great, yep. great analogies, guys. I love this. I, man, I, I love doing this stuff. Hopefully, you know, we get get some uh, people ideas. You know what you all are thinking. Oh yeah. Get them, drop some comments in the chat. Premiere this. Yep. Premiere it. Um, and for any people, because this is this is an hour forty. For any people who managed to stick around all the way through this, you are absolute legends. Yes, you right. are. <laughs> Well, that was the first episode of The Pick Is In, man, the first of many. I am glad that I set this up to where we can do NFL Draft Talk. That was the edge rushers. I guess next week, let's say, what do we want to do? Do we want to do defensive tackle? Do we want to do offensive linemen? Let's do some offensive linemen. Yeah, that's that's the next step. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So are we doing both or are we just doing tackles, what we're doing? I feel like we gotta separate it. We got we gotta we gotta either I, do just tackles or just interior. I agree okay. because you got a difference with O'Neal or Evan Neal. You got a difference with IKM. There's a little difference with Green because they can be multi positional. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, we'll so let's do, say let's, let's say tackles let's next tackles, episode, and then yep. the week after that we'll do guards and center. Hell yeah! And Sounds like plan to me. Yeah. We'll do defensive uh, interior mm-hmm. alignment, defensive tackles, and then we'll go on to each position. And by the time we get to each position, it should be almost time for the draft. Right. So, just just to make people upset, let's do quarterbacks last. <laughs> <laughs> they need to go last. Hell they, yeah. They need yep. to go last. I'm going to be honest with you. But Not a good class. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this, fellas. Can't wait till next week. Yes. Where we'll record again and get this put out on Friday. Once Absolutely. again, I am Big Pass Force Talk. That's Nate Talks Football. That's Classified 3F with Joe. Subscribe to all three of these channels, man. We put in the work, and we're going to continue putting in the work for you guys to bring you great content. This is the first episode. This is epic. This is the first yeah. file of the pick is in with Big Pass Force Talk, Classified Joe, and Nate Talks Football. And until the next episode, peace. Peace. <laughs>